Sorry, did Let's you say it. something? I said every time. What? Every time. That's what I said. Oh, every I'm ready time. every time. Every time. Every time. All the time, every time. Welcome All back, time. everyone, oh. <laughs> to another episode of the GigaHub Weekly Show where we talk about things that matter to us but may not matter to you. I am host one of three, Luis De La Torre. <laughs> I am host two of three, Daikaiju Tony. And I am Adam Crenn. That's right. He's not. He's not part of the number. We haven't accepted him yet. Right. <laughs> he's not up in that upper echelon like right. myself and Tony. That's right. Um, guys, Hi. Pre- today's going to be uh, a book club meeting. So yes, yeah, right. Yeah. While we're we're so while we're plugging our sponsor, which we're going to do, go ahead and make yourself a nice cup of chamomile <laughs> tea. Get your favorite books out, or you know what? Constant comment. Or... Yeah. Get a get some pen and paper. Maybe you can write some of these down so that you can read them at a later date. Yes. <laughs> Um, we it's, will be doing two books each. Real, just real brief it's about it. Book club. It's book club night because we it's have club standards. Night. Unlike exactly. Some people because we're classy as hell, and uh, so classy That's that our great. sponsor is Cosmic Comics, the pop culture a bookstore. mecca. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which you can come get the books that were maybe no, not no. really. No. We not, there's a, not those kind of. We books, actually but. do have a few actual novels, but it's few and far between. It's few and far between. We're just comics, guys. Just Mostly comics. comics. Yep. Uh, yes, the pop culture mecca yeah. of the of the. Excuse me, my wow. hobby, <laughs> Of the Ooh. Allergies? Ooh, yeah, Ooh. allergies. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have everything you might be, uh, lo- your nerdy little heart might be looking for, including, but not limited to, comic books. Comic books. Yes. That you can buy. Naruto G Fuel. You get, there's, oh, no, there isn't, is there? There is, It's yeah. called Naruto, not okay. Naruto. Yeah. God, guys, whatever. <laughs> this, God. Might, this might become dated after a while, but there is a drawing to win anime statues, guys. There is. Come yeah. on down. Yeah, get yourself a to ticket. Hit. You can get some... Uh, what is that? Mahamir Academia. Academia. Academia statues. They're great looking statues. They are. Yeah. Adam hates everything made after 1995, I want to say. So <laughs> it's it's high praise when he was like, oh, these are great looking statues. <laughs> this one looks cool. All right. So so that's something. Uh, anyway, yeah, come on down. Talk to the staff. They're very knowledgeable. And they help you out with whatever you need. More like 2015 or so. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. that, that recent, that's more surprising. Yeah. All right, book club time. Book okay, club. Yeah, book club Who time. Who wants to go first? I go now, first. Now, so look, it's not hard to believe that comic book r- fans also read novels, right? What? I know, yeah. right? There's no pictures in There's these no is pictures. what I said for the first few years when I learned how to Which read. That's why I'm going to bring up an illustrated edition. No, I'm kidding. I'm oh, kidding. you completely ruined the entire, <laughs> the entire purpose of the video. Uh, all right, yeah, who wants to go first? I can go first. Okay. Get it. Uh, the first book I'm going to talk about is one of my favorite. Both of my books are actually science fiction. Um, even though I read a lot of different genres, um, the two books I did pick probably, I don't know, influence is the right word, but blew my mind, or at least I really loved. Um, so the first book I'm going to talk about, it's a, it's an old book. It was actually written, I want to say, in the 30s, and then it was compiled into a novel into the 50s. It's considered a classic. It's very easy to see that it greatly inspired both Forbidden Planet and Star Trek. Um, it is dated because uh, it was initially written in the 30s. It was a series of short stories, and that book is called The Voyage of the Space Beagle by A.E. von Vaught. A dog in space? No, the oh. ship is named the Beagle, kind of like the, you know, the, what's his name? The the villains from the DuckTales cartoons, <laughs> the Beagle Boys. Right, okay. <laughs> right? Uh, no. Oh. The evolution guy. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin? That's it, yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> the evolution guy. <laughs> Do- we call him Dr. Evolution. Yeah. Uh, the, the the Voyage of the Space Beagle is the, the Adventures of the Ship, which um, it's kind of a series of short stories or a series of, well, long short stories or novellas where they encounter an alien race and what happens to it. But it's also about, you know, the it, it kind of starts off, it's kind of mind-blowing. It starts off where the crew aren't always pulling in the same directions. But by the end of the book, they were by almost unethical <laughs> <laughs> unethical means. I don't know. Did you ever read it? No, I've never read um, it. But anyway. I thought it was about a dog. Did you not just hear me? No, it's not about a dog. <laughs> However, there are two <laughs> stories in it that greatly influenced also modern sci-fi in the name of actually Alien. Um, one of the stories, which is called the Ixtal, they they fight a creature that captures crewmen's legs in its stomach. Oh. Um, but this creature is so... Nice, powerful, and so, sweet. Oh. and so nasty. It can literally phase through objects. It can change its molecular 
structure and density. Oh, anything my, my. they anything they hit it with, it shifts so fast that it just becomes invulnerable. Oh, those alien yeah. space wasp. Yeah, and how they defeat it, it's kind of clever. They they have to use a nuclear device out in space, but um, it was good. It's just really good. And like another story, which is about kind of a cat, which looks like a displacer beast from uh, D&D. D&D, yeah. yeah. It's got the tentacles with the arms on it, but it's a, it's like a cat-like alien that is actually really intelligent, but it's a dying race. Another one, they they get bombarded with these psychic waves, and it's driving a lot of the crew crazy until they figure out that it's just, it's basically the, it's the history of the race that they're just being exposed to, and of course they have no psychic defenses. There's also it's like a whole bunch of crazy. So it's just like an anthology of this yeah. one crew. Oh yeah, and it's great. On and uh, um, the what's it called? The Beagle, the Space Beagle. Space wait, Beagle. wait, do people die in this crew? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Do they get replaced with other members or? No, what? no. They so, are. Is it like D and D where they get replaced by is, their their brother with the same no. name? No. So this is an exploration ship going out into space. It's all men because unfortunately it was written in the 30s. Oh, um, okay. Women yeah. women could not go into space in the 30s. Yeah. They would get space madness. Right. Oh my. I guess. Oh golly. <laughs> I they would get according to the, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That seemed to be like because they're yeah. Martha, you're being hysterical. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, so yeah, they just, it's they so travel stupid. out beyond God. the galaxy and they actually encounter an alien race from another like, galaxy. This person couldn't <laughs> even think up of like a woman's job in the thirties to do on the ship, to have women on the ship. Do you, I mean, it's still, it's still it's, disgusting it's men, yeah. and dumb, yeah. but like you're so against the idea of having women in your book. Well, that you couldn't like have a space secretary. Look, look, I'm not. We're not here to judge. No, I know. It's just, it's just time. funny to think about. I like, said it has be, dated. He couldn't even write a space secretary or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, thankfully, Aurora was a character in the '60s. So yeah. Yeah, but anyway, the book is highly in- influential. It's yeah. just a great book. It is a great read. A. E. Von Vogt tends to elicit um, really mind blowing concepts. As a matter of fact, I want to say one of his writing philosophies was. Every 80 pages or so, he wanted to introduce some kind of crazy concept to blow your mind. So, like, this is the book that practically inspired Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Like, with space exploration. Oh, yeah. Star Trek, Forbidden Planet, Alien, actually. Um, Oh, yeah. Alien is pretty... There's so many similarities, and I don't think... I don't think... uh, What's his name? Um, Except they all had women. Yeah. They all had at least one woman. Right. Um, anyway, yeah, it's 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 worth checking out. <laughs> yeah, it's worth checking out. I mean, it sounds. Next? Listen, I know. I'm just. I'm joking, but it sounds. It sounds cool. I just think it's funny. Like he. Like there was no room oh, for women dated. on the ship. It's absolutely yeah, no, it's dated. dated as hell. Yeah. No, and that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you want to go? I'm going to go. Uh, I'll go. Go ahead. All right. I'll start off in a more positive light. Um, <laughs> my wow. Crichton, my Crichton's, um, Jurassic Park. The book. The book, yeah. The yes. book is great. Now, I have not read the book. I've only, really? I've only seen the movies, wow. which is I've why I love the movie. I read the book in middle school, and I thought it was awesome. It made me wish the movie was as good as the book. I like the movie because I grew up with the movie. I grew up with dinosaur toys, and yeah. But my gosh, the book. It's, it's R-rated, badass. basically. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Friggin' o- the opening. <laughs> Friggin' a, a baby gets eaten by those. Um, yeah. I the comp. The little, little comp. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The it's one like that, a toddler, yeah. It's Wait, the little dinosaurs from like the second movie? Yes, from or the second okay, one. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <coughs> yeah right over there? Excuse yeah. me, yeah. Got the Rona? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm glad all your mouths are open and we're actually only one foot apart from each other. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um careful, no one to go off camera. <laughs> okay, fine. Hey, I'm sorry, continue. Okay. Hector Hammond. He is a horrible person in this book. In the book, he yeah. Hector Hammond is kind of like the sweet old, old man with the two grandkids? He's kind of like old Steve Jobs. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. He's just kind of mean and, yeah. He, like, he, he just scolds his grandkids <laughs> yeah. After, yeah. after encountering them. After... I have a dream and nothing will stand in my way. Yes. Not even like, family. Yeah, not even family, yeah. Oh, it reminds me of that Simpsons line, right? Like, what, Dr. Hammond, Mr. Hammond, what happened to your grandchildren? They got in my way. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like a more gory version of the movie, basically. I think, like, I think the biggest thing to me... Of that book that is missing from the movie is the fact that once they encounter the T-Rex in the book, it's not just one T-Rex. It's a T-Rex and a younger T-Rex. Mm-hmm. The, the rest of the book like with later. those, the rest of the book with those characters is them being constantly chased by those two T-Rexes. Yes. And a lot of that isn't in the movie at all. And it's There's really only shame. one T-Rex. Yeah, yeah, it's really a shame. Because hmm. that was like the best part. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. And but, now those scenes ended up in other movies, <laughs> Jurassic Park movies. Yeah. Right. But they're not in the first one. They did eat, they did, the, those dinosaurs did yeah. straight up eat that little girl, which I thought was yeah. uh, awesome. It was interesting. <laughs> but like, I was definitely like surprised, like, wow, we just saw a child get eaten by dinosaurs. Yeah. She so, got eaten to death. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lori character does a lot more before dying. Ian Malcolm dies in the dies story. In the book, yeah. He dies of an infection. He dies, yeah. Only to come back in the second book. Yes, because, well, they needed source material for a second movie. Right. Oh, man. Um, Neil's a lot different. Well, Neil has a beard in the book, and he's more... Well, he's based off an actual guy that kind of looks like that, but he's... Yeah, he's more gruffy. Um, it's less about a story... It's less of a story of him trying to get along with kids and more of <laughs> yeah. him just trying to get the hell out of there with yeah. whoever he's with. Same with Ellie. Yeah. What the scene in Lost, totally the different. scene in the second movie, Lost World, where she's doing gymnastics and running around the the the, the lodge. That's yeah, actually that's, all from the first book. That's supposed to be yeah, Ellie. You know. Yeah. Um. Well, and one of the biggest differences is what happens to all the scientists who got off the island. Um. <laughs> in the book, they die. They die. The, the yeah. Raptors and other dinosaurs know they, they know how to swim, and they yeah. just hop in the boats and kill them all. Yes, they did. And the biggest ending. Oh no! The biggest change to the ending is the island gets. Bombarded with bombs, basically. Yeah, and but the dinosaurs are already on the move in the water, right? Or is that the yes? Second? Yeah. Like a lot of them that went to the boats to eat the scientists got a, a lot of them. A percentage of the dinosaurs did get out, which was yeah. kind of the scary thing. We're swimming away. Yeah. Oh. They knew how to procreate asexually. Yeah. Okay. So it was like more of a grim ending. <laughs> it was a much grimmer apocalyptic ending that totally got changed for the Lost World. <laughs> okay, wow. Yes. Which I is also a good book. I'm going to have to read that. Yeah, oh, plus, um, Dennis, um, his destiny is way more graphic. Nedry? Yeah. yeah Dennis oh, yeah. Nedry. Yes. Like he, he was the, if I remember correctly, Wayne he, he was Wayne Knight, right? Yeah. yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> See, nobody cares. <laughs> I love that scene. Nah. Uh, that, <laughs> nah. Uh, yeah. Nah. Uh, uh. All right, there. what do you got? Uh, the book that I have is... Neither a science fiction book, but it's a book that I recommended to you, so I'd love to get your thoughts on the book. It's uh, Devil in the White City. Oh, yeah, I did read that. Which is one of my favorite books. I actually was part of a book club not that long ago, maybe a couple of years back, and we read this book. So I've read it at least three times you already. You went to a wow. book club and you're like past high Nerd! school? Nerd! Yeah, I had a book club. Yeah, sure. Past up. high so, school? Oh, my God. Yeah, so... God, yeah, something adults do. Wait, yeah. is that a thing? I, I didn't know anyone who was in book club when I was in high school. Was that a thing? <laughs> I always thought that was like a 30-something thing. You know what I mean? Like, let's have a dinner party. Have a book club, everybody. Well, I don't want to see something that makes it sound sexist, so no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, anyway, so and, Devil in the White City. So Devil in the White City is historical nonfiction. It's basically a... Garbage. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. It's basically about the sort of congruent sort of lives of uh, Daniel Burnham, who designed the White City right. at the uh, 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago. Right. It was supposed to be like its own sort of city. City within a city. Yeah. yeah, but it's supposed to be like a futuristic city, right? Like it's supposed to be the city of tomorrow kind of, right? Like it was supposed oh. to represent like hope. And it yeah. was supposed to be like a, a, a path to the future. And then running parallel to it at the same time was the serial killer, uh, the famous H. serial H. killer, H.H. H. H. Holmes, and yeah. his murder castle, which was located in the said white city. Yeah. Um, and basically, just, just up the road. Yeah, not that far. But yeah. they never met. Their paths no, yeah, never yeah. crossed. The book really just sort of, I saw the book as like um like a comparison between, like I said, this future, the city of like hope, and I the wish future. I could have seen it. That that sounded amazing. I know there's like, I think there are photos, but they're pretty rough. Yeah, I've seen some black and white photos. I've looked it up after I read the book for the first time because I know it burned down not too long after the fair closed. What? Yeah. Yeah. But it was it was like I mean the whole thing was like stepping into like a time capsule, right? right. Like just every bit of like but weird like, sort of Americana. Yeah, it was like neo classic though. It was very Grecian Roman, but modern poster. I don't even right know because the terms, architectural terms would be yeah <laughs> because that's what this city was supposed to right. be. And then like running parallel to like the city of hope and the future is like this yeah. dark monstrous person that lives within this city, yeah, yeah. just operating in secret. Renting rooms to people for the World's Fair. Yes, <laughs> and, then, and then to kill them. He had right. tunnels, of course. If, if you didn't know, he had tunnels leading to every room. Yeah. So whoever tickled his fancy uh, would end up getting killed. Yep. yep. And, then I th and then burned alive, right? Or not alive, uh, burned. Just yeah, I think he did and, incinerate him, yeah. Yeah. 
which I think is part of why, how they found out something to do with that, right? I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, they did find uh, that once they started something. searching, they did find remains. Was it the prints on the inside of the cover or something? I believe so, yeah. Because the bodies were just gone. Yeah, they were. But they the, were. The hands were like burned onto the lid or something like that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there was there was plenty of uh, indication that he had uh, done something. By that time, he had right? fled yeah. to Europe or something. Yeah, where he where he. Allegedly killed uh, a woman's entire family. Yeah, Whoa. yeah, slowly. Uh, he's, like like yeah. children, her he's, children. Whoa, not yeah. like a, not like uncles, aunts, he's cousins. He's a pretty children. nasty yeah. guy. Yeah. He was a terrible person. But I mean, like I said, they they don't ever meet. They don't ever run into each other. It's just a sort of comparison of like ambition. life. Dark, the devil in the white city, yeah. right? Ambition. Here's this. Yeah, they're both driven by ambition. <laughs> it's it, yeah. Um, but I, I recommended it to you, and you actually yeah, it was good. You actually, actually listened to it, it. Really yeah, right? You liked it. It was good. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I, I highly recommend. it. I know a lot of people have probably already read it, but honestly, a lot of people that I've talked to, such as yourself, have not read it. Yeah. So I'm surprised how many people haven't read the book. But if you haven't read the book, I highly recommend. You know, I think that's one just sort of an off-topic thing, but I think it's, I think this is something that the fall of the modern bookstore and the way the market has changed so much. I think it's partly why, I mean, because, you know, 20 years ago, well, 10, 15 years ago, I mean, when we when we hung out at bookstores. Yeah. You know what I mean? People you were exposed it, to these kind of things. When we hung out at bookstores? Well, I, I mean, I, I did. People See, I don't. out at bookstores? I, well, I used to. I, I still I love to go to bookstores. I know yeah. a couple cool bookstores I hang out. But, out. like, now I don't really, and it's kind of a shame. I just don't get exposed to stuff. I should probably make it a point to wander in a bookstore. You know, while. the Barnes & Noble has a Starbucks in it. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't hang out at the Barnes & Noble. You get, you get cookies there for, like, <coughs> you, know, you get discounted cookies. Yeah, and you can read the books in the cafe, and no one says anything. Anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And you can use the bathroom, and no one says anything. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make you buy a book to use a restroom. It's great. Um, anyway, yeah, that's that's the, one of the books that I highly Devin recommend. And, and I mean, look, and I got Adam again, who doesn't like anything past what two thousand. <laughs> just fifteen. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. No, I'm. Oh, just it's kidding. a it's a Godzilla thing. Okay, I'm yeah. just kidding. Uh, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you picked up on that. Um, okay, yeah, my second book is another science fiction book. It is another fix-up novel, which I didn't realize when I picked these. A fix-up novel is something that was published previously as short stories and then in magazines usually. Oh, okay. And then, and then they just sort the of author kind of puts all of them all together and writes a little, cleans things up a little bit. Sure. And makes it into a book. And this book was written by none other than George R. R. Martin. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. And it is called Tough Voyaging. Um, ah, okay. We've it, talked about it. It was in development, in development from HBO at one point. I don't think it still is, though. Uh, because I know he said he wanted the guy that played Varys to play tough. Uh, Haviland, right. Haviland tough, yeah. yeah. What it's about... Um, excuse me. What it's about... It's really about a guy, for lack of a better term, who sort of inherits godlike powers through the form of a... Excuse me. Yeah, right you. over there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's oh allergies. Oh, my God. I'm just going to move away from the camera real quick. No, no. Oh, Tony, stop. come here. We're not even that close anyway. Fine. Um, uh, come anyway. Give, come give me a mouth kiss, Tony. Oh. <laughs> anyway, he inherits godlike powers in the form of a spaceship. That's a very old spaceship. Mm -hmm. Apparently, in this sort of universe, um, technology has regressed a little bit. It used to be much higher technology. But for one reason or another... You know, so it's kind of like Dune. Various Dune. intergalactic empires have sort of risen and fallen. So this is an old ship that is very powerful. It's called, oh. I believe, it's called a seed ship, and it carries, it carries genetic materials from every life form humans have ever ever encountered in that time. Hmm. And with that ship, he basically goes around and solves people's problems. Sometimes not in the way they want it to be solved. And every time he solves a problem, he sort of, he gets less attached to humanity and becomes more like sort of a god i guess for lack of a better term oh. where he just he just sort of starts making decisions for their benefit and not not because that's what they wanted oh damn hmm. um and it's really good i mean it's just really really good and um there are a few a lot of these books have like there references to what we were talking about before the show which is going to yeah. be our next uh right, episode right. but oh. we'll continue um so yeah, anyway, there there is a few reoccurring <laughs> characters. There's one story, there's one group he deals with um 
he deals with them in three separate stories and then the other ones he you know deals with one-offs like one of the stories i think it's called a beast for narn which i want to say was it has ties to game of thrones i just don't remember exactly how because it is almost like a medieval planet Mm -hmm. where they fight creatures that are native to that planet and of course this one house hires him to (laughs) make them a better beast because they're not winning Mm. And of course, by that when like it's all Lannister stuff, when it's all said and done, none of them have beasts because he's changed their entire ecology. Damn! <laughs> so they can't. You know what? Now no one gets beasts. Right. How about that? Because he thought it was barbaric and cruel, and oh, why would you do that God. to animals? Yeah. You know, another one that people, the sea people, are eating the the sea life, and they come to find out the sea life is this massively ancient communal mining that exists in the planet. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's good oh, stuff. Oh, so what happens when they eat? The, the well, life. the the whole planet started to go to war against them, and oh. and the longer this war went on, these creatures from the ocean started coming out of the ocean, attacking. The faster they would start to evolve and change to adapt to everything they were getting hit with. So, mm. like these sort of like weird gaseous whale things started floating out of the water and dumping like you know attacking the cities and stuff and once they started shooting them and blowing them up the next ones that raised out of the water the skin was armored they just kept getting <laughs> tougher and cha- and di- cool. changing all the time that, that sounds, sounds awesome cool. yeah. but then once once you know they figured out like hey these these things that you're eating they're super intelligent ancient race who basically live in sort of a trance-like state that's why it took them you know a couple of years before they started to Figure out what the hell is going on. And, super serious Doctor yeah, Who. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay, so Stuff these are all. Like these, this is all like a. What did you call it? A, 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 a fi- fix-up novel. A fix-up novel. So yeah. this is like just all the short stories that appeared in different places. Yeah. All in one. With that same book. character, Haviland Tough. Oh, I have to read this. It's good. It's really good. I think tough we've talked about tough it before, voyaging but I haven't, I haven't actually read it. Yeah, yet. and it's George R. R. Martin. So that's my that's my. Second and book. the story's finished, right? Oh, it's, yeah, it was okay, done, done okay. I want to say, in the late a, 80s. It's, it's not like Game of Thrones. All right. No, yeah. yeah every piece of work of his is unfinished. It's to be fair, he started the yeah. Game of Thrones in the late 80s, too, I think. Yeah. <laughs> or in the 80s, yeah. I'm just saying, he could, he could knock out a, 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 a book about the, what do they call them? The, gosh, how did I forget their names already? The Targaryens. He could knock out a whole Targaryen book. He can't give us the the, the newest. Well, that's because you know they're they're back in HBO's back in a dump truck full of money up to your house. I mean, you're like it's going to shift your priorities around. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Like, but I, don't I know. should finish Game of Thrones, but they're paying me to do this Targaryen thing, so let's worry about Just that. Just the way people talk about it, though, I think that the last episode really turned people off, even to wanting to read the books anymore. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I, the only people I love the last. I I, I think I, I thought it was good. All the I way to the end. I honestly, I the ending is fine. I think the execution was terrible. But really. I didn't. Yeah, I think it happened way too. It happened way too fast. I, you know, I like, we got there way too quick. I, I didn't. I we're getting really off topic. I didn't think so simply because I think by that point you didn't need. I think all the narrative threads were coming together anyway, so we didn't need to keep meandering with certain characters. Mm. Could it have been stretched out another episode or two? Of course, yeah. But I think there's real. I think there's actually real. I think too much happened at once. And, I think, they, and nothing had I time there to was breathe. Real Killing concerns. the Night King, that, that's definitely an end of season um, thing to breathe, to, for the thing to breathe. You know what I mean? Like just the war with uh, Cersei and then like the whole thing with – it just it could have it could have used a whole yeah. other season, I think. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, it could have used a whole other season to breathe. Anyway, we're getting okay. way off topic. Let's Sorry. Let's your second book. All right. Well, P- Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. And I'm just wow. gonna flat out say that the movie sucks. Don't watch the movie. <laughs> wow! It's, 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 it was it's, it was mental torture but for Nathan me. Nathan Fillion's in it. I don't care. Is he really? I don't know. I who, think so. Who does Nathan Fillion play? I don't know. But um, uh, did you not watch the movies? I you did watch the movies, movies right? Who, yeah. Is Nathan Fillion in it? I f- totally forgot. Like, I forgot oh, okay. <laughs> he, he's I in one, one of them. I I one of the things. Anyway, go ahead with your. I'm book. sorry. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Percy Jackson, The Lightning Thief. I read this in elementary and in middle school, and I, it's, it's a book I reread multiple times. It's a young I, adult novel. Yeah. yeah, pretty much got in the back of my head. Kind of like more than Harry Potter, just for <gasps> how it, Blasphemy. just how it melds the Greek setting into modern day uh, setting, which is like where. Okay, here's like one of the biggest contrasts. Percy Jackson, you get to see him interact with the real with um, modern day society with Greek influence, while Harry Potter feels like the Wizarding World is like sh- is like it's not shunned from the rest of society, but it's like it's kept secret. Separate. Shut himself. Yeah. Off. Separate. Yeah. yeah. Their isolation. They don't even have the internet. Disgusting. They don't need it. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> Everyone knows 5G is magic, and that's why we're all getting sick. <laughs> Says the only person here who keeps sneezing and coughing. <laughs> oh my god! I'm, I'm perfectly healthy. <laughs> okay, okay. Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. It's for the first book. It opens a whole. I don't want to say can of worms, but like it definitely <laughs> builds Pandora's box. Yes, it be- definitely <laughs> builds the whole big world and setting of it that normally you'd expect for a book series to like build within maybe. Three or four books, but within Percy Jackson, The Lightning Thief, you get the whole, oh, almost the whole layout, just right there, with um, Camp Half Flood, and how it affects the rest of the modern world, and yeah. there's like a lot more context of what's going on in the book compared to the movies because there's more characters that could have been there, but no, no. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, don't compare it to the movie. Okay. Is that now? Let me ask you the question, right? It's a young adult novel. It's a, it's a novel are... that was in such scope that it would have been hard to, clearly difficult to, to turn into a movie. That's why it should have been a show. Oh wait, wait. Disney Plus is turning it into a show. Oh, well, there you go. You I might get how, your redemption. I wonder how that's going to. Yeah. Be. Okay. All right. <laughs> kind of like the book of Boba Fett. Okay. Okay. I don't want to think about that <laughs> now. Get, oh my God. That, Is that, anyway, go are you suggesting yeah. the next episode? <laughs> thanks for ruining my thoughts. Okay. Um, mm. But yeah, well, the Prince Jackson book itself, it's a good young adult book. Um, it's actually a good way to get kids into Greek mythology because rather, li- yeah. rather like it or not, you're going to have to learn it eventually in high school or in middle school for some reason. And well, here, here's the thing. Just, it's, just don't think <laughs> Thor is getting your kids into... Uh, Norse mythology. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. There you go ahead. Well, well, there is a Norse mythology lore within Percy Jackson, but that's like down the line. That's like later on. Um, it's when the book jumps the shark. It starts going yes. to Norse mythology. Jumps the Jormund. But, <laughs> but Percy, Grover, and Annabelle, they're just way more relatable characters in the book than in the movie. Well, I can't, why do I have to keep compared? But here's the thing. <laughs> they're, they're actual You're kids. You're that mad to the movie, huh? They're, they're actual kids. They're not... Older teenagers that are supposed to be hip and like, hey, look, kids! Like, no, they're and in these in this in the book, they're kids with actual issues and with you know childish banter's to each other, and the who, kind of stuff that a kid would like to read. Yes, yeah. There you go. Is that? Do you think the book is? Do you think you can enjoy the book now as an adult? Yes, I Do you think I an can. adult could enjoy the book? Yes, I read? can. If I were to read it, would I think it was good? Yes, and it even, well. I don't want to say it dwells into mature subjects, mm-hmm. it, but it kind of does. <laughs> like <Okay>. sex! <gasps> no, no. Uh, more like um, domestic... Children domest- watch this show. Domestic abuse. Oh. Stuff like that. Oh. Yeah. That's way worse than... Oh. Po- <laughs> poverty. Oh. Yeah. Dark. Wow. With, with Percy's uh, uh, stepfather. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. But, okay. yeah, it's... No, that's good. It's honestly good. a great way to modernize Greek mythology. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool, dope. Uh, mine, uh, mine is kind of in the same ilk. Mine's more of a fantasy no, novel. It's not. No, no, never mind. Go ahead. Nope. There's a, I was gonna say Harry Potter, <laughs> Harry Potter and the Mysterious Lower Back Problems. <laughs> Why, Ron? Why? It just I woke up and it hurts. Livio so. Livio so. Livio so. Uh, it's probably a book that uh, I don't know how many people have heard of it. I only heard of it maybe a couple of years ago, but it, it's it was originally published in 1986. Uh, I think it, it's called The Maze of Peril. It is a fantasy book written by is John. It a choose your own adventure. It sounds no, like a choose. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> not. It does sound like. It does sound like <laughs> a maze of peril. A maze of peril. Choose your own adventure. <laughs> it's it's actually great. written by John Eric Holmes, who is the original writer of the Blue Box of the D and D Basic Blue Box. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so he basically had written this story, which was per- originally published in 1986. It was. It was basically the adventures in his home. Nineteen eighty six. Are you sure this isn't a choose your own adventure now? It's <laughs> not. It's not. I, 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 know, it's like like, oh, I bet yeah. they were they came back when I was a kid in the nineties. Oh, really? okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I can read one in elementary. <laughs> but um yeah, so it's basically a published adventure of his home game. Oh, nice. His homebrew world, uh, where his son played one of the characters. His son had if you read the book, his son plays uh, the halfling. Um Bo- I believe his name is Boinger. Is yeah, the book still readable today? 
because I started and, and, rereading the Dragon Lances and I did not find them readable of course, today. Well, first off, like they did you can not stick age it. well. You can shove it. Oh, I couldn't get I into them. Books. I loved them back then. I tried to read one last year. Is and it, I was like, oh. is it easy? I uh, can you read it now? Is really rough. I, I couldn't say individually whether uh, you would like it or not, whether either of you would like it or not. But I think it is. I mean, I enjoy okay. it. It's basically like you, you're basically. It, it's like the the book you were talking about, the the first book. Right, it Voyage was of the space people? yeah. Like just because it's from the '30s doesn't mean that it's not readable. Right. It's the same thing, but yeah. it's basically like reading a pulp, uh, a pulp fantasy adventure, right? Okay. Like along the lines of like a lot of the people that inspired him, which was like um, the uh, why am why am I blanking on their names? Um, uh, <laughs> Robert Robert E. Howard, okay. Um, uh, the guy who wrote oh the guy who wrote Father and the Great Bowser, Steve oh, yeah. Steve. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Liebowitz, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Lieber. St- Steve Lieber. Yeah. Steve Lieber. Lieber yeah. Uh, yeah. He, th- he gets a lot of influence from there. Uh, there's a lot of parts in the book where you can tell it's straight up like campaign jabber that happened in between players, like yeah. like uh, finding treasure and f- and like finding a flare w- a fair way to split the treasure or finding a way to solve specific problems. It's definitely like you can tell at what point the role playing kind of stopped, and it was more like. No, I believe that this would be the best course of action. <laughs> well, I disagree. Like it's yeah, and if you're not a fan of um Maze of Peril. Maze choose of your Peril. Own it, it's not a choose your own adventure. It's not a choose your own adventure. Okay. Um but it is like a it is just like an old school sort of retro pulpy. Maybe I'll give it a read. Um yeah, you can probably I, I got my copy on uh on Amazon for six bucks. I know they keep okay. uh that they they don't keep them in stock very often, yeah. but I, I I think the last time it was in stock it was ten bucks. So I mean it's still a pretty fair price, but it's a it's a quick read. It's about like a hundred and some odd pages. You oh, can probably okay. finish it in a day. Oh wow! Honestly, um, but yeah, it's really good. I really enjoyed it. Like I I read uh, like a bunch of those old fantasy books and stuff. I, I have a bunch of them. I go to Dragon Castle. Shout out to Dragon Castle all the time, and I pick up those old pulpy books from like the, that they printed in the 70s and the 60s like the michael moorcock books and stuff like that i have pulpy books that's the 30s man <laughs> 20s and 30s but hey, I, so. I mean they, they don't have to be from the 20s and 30s to be pulp or pulp ish pulp esque yeah that's i guess true. i should say that's true they're not made out of the same material but <laughs> just don't pick up any of the conans boy why because those are not good <laughs> those are the ones where elsprog de camps Edited and rewrote a lot of that stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Even in the ones we got? Pick, no, pick those are the ones. Those are the ones you want. Those are the original oh. Robert E. Howard ones. Yeah, get those books. I, f- I forgot yeah. what edition they're called, but they're like the ones with the black covers. Yeah, oh, it's like brown. It's like a dark brown, and it says the. Co- Maybe it is black. I thought it was black. But it's coming, like a black marbling. Conan, the coming of the Sumerian, or something like that. Yeah. Coming I'd, of Conan, the Sumerian, something like that. There's three books. They're, they've yeah. got a black cover on them, and in the black cover, there's just a singular picture. We recommend that you get those. Yeah. Those are the don't, best Yeah, ones. don't get the ones from the 70s or the 80s. Yeah, yeah, no, don't do, don't do that. But yeah. it is Some very... Leonard, Leonard Carpenter stuff is good. Yeah, but it is very reminiscent of those uh, of those All old right. school wow, fantasy adventure long. books. Yeah. And uh, right. like I said, it's written by a guy who wrote the original basic blue box, so... You can't go wrong there. Anyway, uh, if that's it, that's it. That's two for everybody, right? Yeah, let's yep. get out of here. All right, guys. So we highly recommend these books. Pick them up whenever you can. If there's yes. a book that you would like to recommend to us or anyone else who's yeah. also commenting with you, leave it in the comments below. Hit the like or dislike and subscribe button so that you help us out with the algorithm monster. Yes, please. Yeah. and like, a, and, Or subscribe if you want to know when our videos come out so you can be mad at us or love us. <laughs> I don't know yet. Um, if that's it, guys, we'll see you next week. Yep. Good night. All right.